everyone, it's Tara. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm here with my October wrap up. October went pretty well. I actually felt like I read less than I did because the, as I'm looking back on the month, this month, like the books that I read at the beginning of the month, I feel like I read like, like two or three months ago. So before I get into the books that I read, I wanted to touch on books that I did not read. So I did not get from my October TBR Frankenstein Red um, or Josh and Hazel's Guide to Not Dating Red or The Demon King. I am currently reading Ruin. So I didn't finish it in October, but you know. And I started The Raven Tower and I actually read like 50 or 60 pages and I could not get into it. So I DNF'd this one. And then I went to pick up The Scarecrow, which was also on my October TBR. And when I scanned it in Goodreads, I found out that it's like book two. There's like two different series that this is a part of. Like it follows two different people that each have their own series. So it's book two in one series and book like five or eight or something in another series. And I cannot read books books and series out of order. Like even if everybody on the planet tells me that I don't have to read them in order, like once I know that it's in a series, I I can't read a book, like a series out of order. So that's kind of where we stand with the books that I did not read from October. Let's get into the books that I did read. These aren't in any order. Uh, so the first book I read was Fudge Cup Cake Murder. Actually, I'm just going to talk about these two at the same time because they're both their books in a series. So I read Fudge Cup Cake Murder and Sugar Cookie Murder books five and six, I think, in the Hannah Swinson series. As always, I enjoyed them. I do think you need to read these books in order, so I don't want to say too much about the overarching plot of the series because there are things that carry over from book to book to book. In Fudge Cupcake Murder, Hannah's brother-in-law, Bill, is running for sheriff in their town, and the person that he is running against ends up dead. So Bill becomes almost like the prime suspect because the, the race is somewhat is slightly heated. So Hannah tries to clear Bill's name. Then Sugar Cookie Murder, takes place at Christmas time, so I'm reading it slightly out of season, um, takes place at their town's like Christmas party. And this year the town's doing something a little bit different in that they are having a huge potluck for people to bring in recipes that are being published in this town-wide cookbook. And it's going to be, you know, a fun time until Hannah, as she normally does, stumbles across a dead body. The Christmas party goes on lockdown because they figure that the suspect is still in the building that the Christmas party is taking place in. So they're trying to solve this without raising too much suspicion that something's amiss. So both of these got four and a half stars for me this month. The next book I read was a book that I borrowed from the library. It was Nantucket Nights by Ellen Hildebrand. This is the same person who wrote Summer of 69, which I read this summer and loved to pieces. I enjoyed this one as well. Not quite as much as I enjoyed Summer of 69, but overall it was a really great book. I gave my Nantucket Nights four stars. There were just some like smutty sex scenes that I'm not a huge fan of. Yes, they like somewhat contributed to the plot, but I don't think you needed to go. I, I'm of the opinion that you don't need to go into like all the detail to explain the intimacy of a relationship in order to get the point across. That's my opinion. Some people really like it. I'm just not one of them. So that kind of detracted from the book for me a little bit. But overall, it was a really great a really great book. I really enjoyed it. Nantucket Nights follows three friends, Kayla, Val, and Antoinette. They have this ritual that every summer, the Friday, the Friday of Labor Day weekend, they get together at the same spot 
and kind of have a girls night where they drink, eat, and go swimming. They've been doing this for years and years and years since they were roommates um, one summer. This year, Antoinette and Kayla kind of get into an argument and Antoinette goes into the ocean to kind of cool off and never comes back. And so they have to call in this huge search. Where is she? Is she somewhere in the bottom of the ocean? Did she make it to shore? What's going on? And so you follow that investigation as to what is going on with Antoinette and where is she. Throughout this investigation, a lot of secrets are, are turned up. It's the family secrets of Val and Kayla and things that neither one of them knew was going on are exposed as investigators are trying to figure out what happened with Antoinette. I think this book was a great commentary on friendships and you know, some friends are more invested in a friendship than others and how, how, to hand, how to cope with that when you find out that maybe you're the friend that's more invested in the friendship and an interesting commentary on families and family dynamics and relationships. And I really enjoyed reading about the different dynamics and the different relationships. Then I read The Escape Room by Megan Golden. This I did as a buddy read with my mom. I enjoyed this as well. I gave it four stars as well. This was a really quick read for me. I think both my mom and I ended up finishing it ahead of schedule because we just had to keep reading. So The Escape Room is kind of what it sounds like. It's about an escape room. I don't want to say too much because it is a thriller and I don't want to give too much away, but a very, very brief synopsis is four people, four coworkers are called to this building for what they think is like a team building exercise. They're not sure why. They, once everybody gets there, they get in this elevator to go to this escape room. And basically they get trapped in this escape room and they have to figure a way out and solve the clues. And until they solve the clues, they aren't escaping, whether it's longer than an hour or not. So I think that's about as much as I can say without giving the, the story away. My one complaint, if you will, which is the timeline was a bit unclear to me because you do have two perspectives. You have them in the escape room and you have the timeline of events leading up to the escape room. And I feel like the timeline, like it wasn't clear, like how far in the past the past was leading up to the escape room, if that makes sense. Like it doesn't say like, oh, this was one year ago, two years ago, three years ago. It just is sometime in the past and, and you don't really know how far back that was. And I didn't, I didn't love not having that firm timeline, but it doesn't take away from the story too much unless you really like knowing where you are in the timeline of things. Uh, anyways, so that was The Escape Room by Megan Golden. It was a four star read for me. Then I read The Cherry Cola Book Club by Ashton Lee. This was another library borrow, library loan. I just kind of picked it up randomly. It caught my eye and so I checked it out and it was, it was good. It wasn't horrible. I gave it three and a half stars. It was a pretty cute story overall and a pretty quick read. It was only, it wasn't even 300 pages. It was like 250 pages. So the Cherry Cola Book Club follows this librarian of this small town library, Maura Beth, Maura, yeah, Maura Beth. Maura Beth has been told by some, I don't want to say, it wasn't like a mayor. It was like some town, like councilman or something. I don't remember his position that she needs to basically increase the circulation of books, increase library membership, or they are going to cut funding to the public library and use the money that they are spending on the library on this like development project to try and bring more money and jobs into the town. So they give her, I think they give her six months. I think it's like this, 
they, she gets told during the summer that they, they have until like the end of the year. So it's like five or six months that it, it, if they don't see an improvement in that amount of time, that funding's going to be cut. So Mora goes to one of her friends in this town and is like contemplating how she's going to make this happen. And they come up with this idea to start a book club. They try and get the town to rally around the library. And the thing that I really liked about this book is it shows really how important libraries are to the town. Even if you're not going and checking out books all the time, what what services the library can offer. You know, they have they have a member of the town who's using the library to try and find another job. They have, you know, um, meetings at the library for um, other clubs in the town. And it just, it shows how, how beneficial having a, a library in your town is. And so I really liked that aspect of it. I feel like there was some, um, some character development lacking, especially in the main character, Maura Beth. I feel like I wanted to know more about her. Now, this is a, the first book in a series, so I might get more of that in future books. So I'm not, I, I'm, I'm holding off on that complaint a little bit just yet. Overall, it was a cute story. I will probably at some point read the rest of the series a cute three and a half star read. Then the last book that I read, which I technically finished yesterday, which was November 1st, but I read most of this in October, and that is Misery by Stephen King. This was another four star read for me. I enjoyed it. Um, it wasn't quite what I was expecting, but overall it was a good book. So Misery follows author Paul... Sheldon. Paul has just finished writing what he thinks is going to be his like new like bestseller. He's so proud of this book. Uh, he's driving. He, he wants to get back home and ends up in a car accident. And then he wakes up after he doesn't even know how long he's unconscious. He wakes up and he is in someone's house. And it turns out that the house the owner of the house that he is in is Annie Wilkes, who is apparently Paul Sheldon's like hugest fan. Paul isn't sure why he is in a house instead of a hospital, and he knows that he is somewhat seriously injured. It turns out Annie is not exactly mentally stable. She's a little bit of a psycho. And Annie ends up keeping Paul hostage until Paul writes the next installment of his book series, Misery. So all sorts of things happen <laughs> in this. And it gets a little graphic and gory. And yeah, but overall, it was actually really good. And the thing that I found really interesting is throughout the book, there's really only the two characters, Paul and Annie. You get some side characters, but really it's Paul and Annie. And there's only really one setting, which is Annie's house, which is actually the room that Annie has Paul held in, in Annie's house. You see a little bit of other rooms of her house, but pretty much it's two people in one setting the entire book and is really good, all things considered. So... The, I, I think, I guess I was expecting, I didn't know a lot about this going in, just that I'd heard a few people uh, talk about it and it sounded interesting. I guess I was thinking that it would be more scary. It wasn't that. It wasn't scary with like, you know, things jumping out at you or like a psycho. Well, there was a psycho. She was crazy. But it was, I guess I was, I was expecting it to be more like, the Shining the movie or like Carrie or Pet Cemetery, where it's like jumpy and like things like scary ghosts and things. And this is really just like this, this author is stuck with a crazy psycho. And how is he going to get out of this situation when she keeps doing things that make it more and more impossible for him to escape? So it was a little bit of a letdown, but not too much because I'm okay with it not being super creepy. 
but I was just expecting it to be more creepy than it was. I don't know if that makes sense. So, but it was good. I enjoyed it. So this is what I read the month of October plus two more books. Let me know down below what books you read the month of October. What book was your favorite book that you read in October? And what book was the most like Halloween-y, like had the best Halloween vibes, whether it was, you know, scary or like creepy or there was a psycho killer on the loose or whatever it was. Like what was your most Halloween-y read? That's it for now. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time, happy reading. Bye.